Have you always loaded up Paladins and thought, hey, I wanted to play a Vampirus, Nosferatu, or, in common tongue, a Vampire? Well, now you can in some form. So in OB44, Tyra got the legendary card called First Blood, which originally gave you 20% lifesteal base, which is level 2 of Life Rip, the burn card in the game. Now, with a buff in OB45, which is currently on the PTS, it isn't live yet, that card has been buffed by 10% to give you 30% lifesteal. That means at the start of the game, you're gonna have that third card of lifesteal straight away. What it means is that you can duel and sort of survive even if you're face to face with somebody with leeching their life as you're firing at them. Life Rip has been a thing in lots of MOBA games and heroes like Life Stealer in Dota 2 have a similar ability and they basically uh, live and fight by taking people head on and basically sucking all of their life out of them and basically just chewing them up and tanking by being able to sustain themselves whilst fighting them. Now, like in a, a MOBA game, they are very vulnerable to being quickly bursted down, to being stunned, so they can't use their lifesteal, and I guess in some ways, that sort of carries over to here, because Tyra is this very slow champion that has no movement abilities, you have to buy cards, bird cards, to get that movement, or have cards in your deck that with some abilities you can get more movement, uh, like Tracker, which gives you extra movement whilst you've got Hunter's Mark on somebody, but in general, you don't have that maneuverability that other champions do, and if you do get stunned, you do get caught out or bursted down really quickly, this card isn't going to do a lot for you. But anyway, I've been playing around with it, and especially now there's the sort of Transylvanian looking sort of vampiric skin for Tyra. It made a lot of sense that that had come out, because this is literally the vampire build for Tyra. And I've got some pretty good moments in games where I've taken out a whole team and just been able to chew face whilst basically taking them on literally just inches apart, but looking at them, bursting them down whilst they try to do damage to me, and maybe even being a bit disorganized because they just see me healing up so much. Another thing is as well, your ultimate, which basically makes you fire faster uh, and speeds you up, it synergizes so well with this card because when you're doing that extreme damage to somebody, you can focus on one target, take the damage, because you're going to be getting all that health back from the lifesteal, and then just focus on another target. Another big benefit of this card, and why you're going to be even more of a vampire, is you can stack the life rip card, the burn card in the game, on top of your normal life steal on this first blood card. And that means you can get up to 60% life rip in the game. And that's as long as there isn't a cap. I'm, I'm not 100% sure whether there is a cap on life steal, but in the last patch, the 50% was confirmed. But at the very least, you'll be able to get to that 50% a lot quicker because it's only going to cost you 900 credits. I think that is probably not a good idea to stack up the lifesteal in more serious games. But in casual games where you're just messing about, stacking up life rips straight away could just be a fun way of going about trying to be the, the ultimate vampire in the game. And basically what I've been doing in these games, or getting two and then maybe being serious a little bit and getting cauterized or something that is very important to the game. And mentioning cauterize, now cauterize from OB43 affects life rip. It means that this lifesteal card is gonna be useful early on because you're gonna be doing all of the lifesteal possible and a lot of it. But then later you get into the game and if people pick up cauterize, then you're going to do worse and you're going to get less returns on those life steals. But generally, you're still going to have that essence of being able to sustain yourself and heal up whilst you're attacking somebody. But if you do see a Tyra in the game with first blood, then cauterize could be an option. Like, or it could compound with another healer to make you think, yeah, we do need some more cauterize online this game. Some things to consider are who this can really fit with, because maybe if your team only picks a Grok or a Pip that don't really do the, the healing all of the time, that you need to really be sustained and keep be kept up all the time as a damage dealer, this could be an option to still have the sustain and the, the viability of being able to keep yourself up without needing the heals all of the time. And this could be the pick to really fit the gap if that happens, especially in casual games where you don't know what you're gonna get, you don't know what your allies are gonna pick and they might not want to change or switch to the current meta. So you might be wanting to be a strong independent Tyra who can lifesteal herself and keep herself alive. There is a card in her deck as well called Locked and Loaded, 
and this increases the ammo count by uh, 2, 4, 6, 8. And this is the card I thought, well, actually, maybe this will synergize with the first blood card because you're going to be able to put out more damage per magazine, which is kind of important for your life rip and your sort of dual potential with enemies. I think I've got it on level 2 at the moment, but actually maybe I'll jump that up just with this build and maybe see how that goes. There are some of the cards that give a bit more utility, but I'm not sure. This card might be the, the sort of the key to the, the jewels and keeping this lifesteal very constant. I'd like to mention that in the footage, I probably am not controlling my recall as much as I should do. I haven't played Tyra for a very long time. She's been out of the meta, so I've only just come back to her. And I know at range, you do need more control with the burst fire and sort of mid middle range as well. Maybe I'm not bursting as much as I should do. But I feel with this card, you sort of play a more aggressive game. Really getting to people's faces, chasing people down, getting close to people, really putting the pressure on and making them panic when they start firing at you, but then seeing that you're just chewing back the damage and getting that lifesteal off of them. Especially in the early game when there's no cauterize online, you can be really aggressive and sort of really push the enemies. And we have seen Tyra picked a few times in the pro scene, and that was before this buff to the first blood, and she was generally just doing outputting a lot of damage. But will this actually give enough utility over Hunter's Party? Giving everybody that damage buff? I'm not entirely sure. But it definitely is a fun build. I think that's the main thing about it. To be the vampire in the game is fun. And maybe we'll see a champion actually based around lifesteal in the future. That could be rather interesting. It also made for a lot of cool moments, especially when you're ulting and you're taking like three or four people whilst they're trying to hit you, uh, rather than trying to run away or get away from it, or try and shield away from it. It can be quite ridiculous. And I guess it just gives you the, the power to keep putting out the damage without running away, without having to keep coming in, in and out of the combat. You can just stay in the combat and you're healing all the time because you're always doing damage. And you could be doing, what, 110,000 damage in a game? Uh, it's like, you know, you're healing for like 40,000. That could be more than a healer in a game would heal just you. That's that's quite a big deal. Obviously, Cauterize comes into effect and things like that. But also, you'll get the Life Rip card, which will buff that up. But to put it in context, that is quite a lot of healing if you're doing lots of damage. Uh, and obviously, not all the time you're hurt. But it's just worth taking into consideration. Anyway, will anyone else be trying out the vampire setup for Tyra? And does anyone have any sort of uh, tips for that? Has, has anyone else been trying it? Has anyone else been playing it? And does anyone, has anyone got any thoughts about the cards with this loadout? Or would you take the normal uh, cards that are currently in the meta that keep being picked? Something worth mentioning as well, just whilst we're on the topic of Tyra, is that Tyra is the highest win rate champion, a damage champion, with 57% win rate. She's been out of the meta so long. It just must be that in sort of casual, she must be really shining. And I'm not entirely sure why she was in the past, but I guess that in high level games, there's a lot more movement and chasing down and positioning that really catches Tyra out. But I just thought that was interesting. And I mean, to be fair, the flanker as well is 56% Sky. And Maeve is actually behind that with 53%. So maybe you can see why the devs do some balancing changes that we don't really expect. And also, Torvald 63%. How? Just get Wrecker. What are you doing, folks? But seriously, 63% uh, on Torvald. And that's why he probably got a nerf, even though he really doesn't need one. Maybe just like have an arrow whenever Torvald comes online, like, buy Wrecker, buy Wrecker, buy Wrecker to the damage dealers. Anyway... If you liked the video, be sure to hit that like button. If you didn't, well, you know, you can hit the dislike button. And thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Just so you know, out.